they are like this. The uh, connections between how uh, uh, Patrick Geddes and then uh, Patrick Geddes with uh, John Garner. Uh, uh, no in informed plan planning historian should be surprised to hear about the anarchist roots of the planning movement. The main reason I remember is the classic book of Peter Paul Six of Tomorrow, published by Basie Blackwell in 1988. Hall firmly stated that many of the first ideas of the urban movement in the 20th century arose from the anarchist movement, which flourished in the last decade of the 19th century and the first years of the 20th century. That is true, he says, for Hover, for Geddes, and for the Regional Planning Association of America, as well as for many derivatives in the European continent. Hall pointed to another key line of influence of anarchies on a later developed notion of bottom-up urbanism. Bill Ford, he says, he writes, come uh, from the hands, or should come from the hands of their own citizens, he writes, we should reject the tradition whereby large organization, private or public, build for people, and instead we should, uh, we, we, we should embrace the notion that people should build for themselves. We can find this notion powerful, powerfully present in the anarchist thinking, he writes, and in particular to the Asian notions of peaceful urban rehabilitation between 1885 and 1920. It resurfaces to provide, to a major, even a dominant uh, ideology of planning in third world cities through the work of John Garner himself, drawing right directly from anarchy thinking in Latin America during the 1960s. That line would constitute a crucial element, writes the whole in the intellectual evolution of Christopher Alexander and culminate in the community design movement in the 70s and 80s in the United States and above all in Britain. The idea of a, an anarchist strain of planning history was not altered at all in the reissues of the book in 1996 and 2002 and was definitively confirmed with a few new references in the fourth and last expanded edition that widely just six years ago. This is a scheme of the evolution timeline -like movement from the beginning <coughs> from the time of the army geographers, recruit and uh, robot king to Howard Geddes and then on the one side on the regional side of the, the diagram to Mantua and the regional planning institution of America and then to uh, the anarchist artists from the, the country uh, and simply fusion or integration on, on the other side from the, this bottom up urbanism uh, through uh, especially Corridor and, and John Talk. It is important to point out that the relevance that Patrick Geddes and Regional Planning in the book as a key to bridging the period between uh, the two historical moments where uh, Anarchist strain, where the anarchist strain of planning history was remarkable. Anarchist territorial thought had clear elements of continuity in the regionalists of the first of the first third of the 20th century, especially through 
the influence of uh, Patrick Geddes, the influence of Repli on Patrick Geddes and Kropotkin on Lewis Mount. The Scottish plan by Patrick Geddes also constitutes a trade union with war and Turner in the second post-war period. The Cold War years of freedom, as freedom editor, of, uh, would be seminal to uh, this uh, issue. The reflection of a bottom-up urbanism will be, for the first time, a focus of anarchists, architects, and urban planners, and not anymore of geographers. The indoor report of 1917, 1917 is, according to Hall, an essential document for Turner's interest in self-help housing from the 1950s. Holmes book has had a little impact within the thriving world of anarchist geography, where, however, the connection of Reclus, Kropotkin, and other 19th century anarchist geographers with regionalists has not been overlooked. We can see the evaluation of the anarchist roots of geography in some issues of the journal Antipode in the late 70s, but the definitive emergence of anarchist geography in the academic world is quite recent, practically from the last decade. The few studies of anarchist geography dedicated to the city have so far been limited to the 19th century anarchist geography. Traces of Peter Hall's book are non-existent there, and the only reference to the planning uh, historian and very critical uh, is that of uh, the geographer, the anarchy geographer Lopez de Sousa. Only Omorono, from the perspective of uh, sociology and urban social anthropology, has explicitly <coughs> traced the recruit urban thinking the threat of continuity with Geddes and Manfred following Hall's thesis. The impact of Hall's thesis within planning history was immediate. Surprisingly, it has been relatively small in the historiography of anarchism. And it is surprising because much of Hall's argument about the anarchist root of planning derived mostly from his contacts with Colin Ward since the late 60s. In particular, the reading of Ward's compilation of articles appeared in the anarchist press since 1944, later uh, collected in Housing and Anarchy's approach is very evident in Cities of Tomorrow. The proximity between the two uh, will materialize in whole initiatives that oppose conventional state planning and uh, advocated urban planning from below, like the uh, non plan X. They will collaborate later in a joint book on the fortune of the city garden movement to commemorate the centenary of Howard's book. Actually, the few references to Hall's book don't mean that the world of anarchist urbanists was not aware of Hall's thesis. Hall took the idea of a thread between a recluse and Turner from the writings of post-war anarchist architects and people close to regionalists. Since 1942, George Woodcock already published a series of articles in uh, a World Commentary for Anarchists, which was the, 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 the name in the World War II given to the old uh, periodical uh, founded by Kropotkin called Freedom. In these new papers and brochures on urban planning uh, and regionalism, uh, Woodcock uh, wrote also about railroads 
countryside question. In them, in those articles and brochures, Woodcock uh, established the connection of the anarchist geographers to Hover together and Manfred and the Regular Classical Association of America. And these articles had a significant influence on Colin Ward and other English artists. Freedom published articles on housing, urban planning, and regionalism not only by Ward, but also by the Carlo and Turner in 1948. Ward will remember several times the context uh, with those architects and their circles of mm -hmm. anarchist sentences. But Proof, Maria Luisa Bernetti, the art historian Herbert Reed, or Italians like Cataria. Joanna Bernay and others. Under the name of organic planning, the historic anarchist threat of cities of tomorrow's appears clearly in L'Equivoco de la Città Jardin by Carlo Doyle, published in Voluntà uh, Deliveries in 1953, or in a later compilation of texts by Page. The interest of some of the young anarchist <coughs> architects in the 40s and 50s for Gates and for Manford, as is the case of Turner or Doglio in the early 50s, is quite clear. In the 1950s, Gates and Manford were thus part of the anarchist heritage. Actually, both will become the inescapable bridge for a possible anarchist urbanist that these architects would have to develop. Then a prolonged silence until very recent times. On the one hand, not many planning historians seem, seem uh, very interested in pursuing, beating, or correcting the anarchist thesis of Peter Hall's book. On the other hand, the so obvious connection between architecture, urbanism, and anarchists for the anarchist architects of the 1950s and 1960s seems uh, today forgotten or invisible in libertarian movements. Probably this oblivion has to do with intrinsic weaknesses of cities of tomorrow physics on the anarchist strain of planning history. One of these weaknesses is to imagine anarchies as a homogeneous whole with no differences between Proudhonian mutualism, Bakunian collectivism, or Prokopinian anarcho-communism. Lopez de Sousa is right when he states that Hall's generic anarchist explains probably too many things. Something that is made very explicit, especially in Howard's connection with Kropotkin or a recruit and Kropotkin connections with Patrick Gates. We need to specify much more the connections from the historical point of view than Hall does. And that brings us to the second of the weaknesses of the anarchist thesis of Cities of Tomorrow. The connections between Howard, Kropotkin, and Howard and Kropotkin, or between Recluse and Geddes are lax and in some cases only hypothetical. They demand necessarily a work on primary sources that a group of sentences like Howe's does not contemplate by definition. The third of all witnesses is that of being too angry in this or in his vision of the anarchist strain of urban planning. Despite the inventive uh, richness of British anarchist architects of the second post-war period and uh, occasional allusions to Giancarlo de Carlo via Colin War, the precious connection with the wall of the Italian architects and urban planners of the post-war period is absent. In particular, the figure of Carlo Doglio remains completely under research. 
nor, nor two planners of the post-war, nor, nor other uh, episodes appear such as the productive flow of communalist proposals for the country city symbiosis of the Spanish libertarian war, proposals with great reclusion and especially crop opinion descent, but also the preference to the garden city. The <coughs> sort of direct action and urban struggles are equally absent in Hall's work, such as, for instance, the rent strikes of the first third of the 20th century of significant impact on some Spanish, French, and Latin American city where anarcho-syndicalism was especially present and strong. The rich uh, tradition of libertarian utopias and alternative spaces outside the city or in its margins is also left out by Peter Hall. Hall lacks reference to, for instance, communities and influential work in the world of anarchist urban thinkings written by Percival and Paul Ruth. Surprisingly, surprising is also the absence of reference to libertarian municipalism and the social ecology of Murai Gucci, a thought initiated in the early, uh, as early as the publication of the seminal Silent Spring by Rachel Carson. Influences uh, that can be extended uh, to the Progetto Locale of uh, Alberto Magnano. <laughs> Experiences of British participative self-help building, such as that of Walter Segal, are very briefly referenced in the book, not to mention those developed in other European countries by Bernard Cohn, Lucien Kroll, and other uh, and others, Father and, and Leo. This is a, a skin based one. Uh, built by uh, Marta Serra on the importance of these lines which uh, goes from the architect's uh, control uh, as for instance projects and uh, realization of Giancarlo de Carlo to the sorry to the autonomous the totally autonomous control in the case of John Tucker. Look, all these experiences were especially in the 50s, 60s and 70s, called the, the hippie period of uh, architecture. <coughs> if we talk, if we too, sorry, if we take all this into account, we would have a much more panoramic and nuanced vision of the anarchist stream of planning. Obviously, a thesis book as planning as holds can be asked to take account of that. It would be indeed extremely unfair for an absolutely pioneering work putting on the academic map the richness of anarchist thinking to inspire alternative horizons to organize. No other book in planning history has been able to approximate those walls apparently so distant and yet so close. What we must do is not to marginalize holes, fists, however vague and hasty it is, but to discard from the sources the unproven connections and to provide the plausible arguments with rigor from a more in depth knowledge of the anarchist of hit sites. The question is indeed to investigate the connection rigorously, if any, between these authors and the great episodes of alternative social planning of the 20th century. 
such as the Garden City and the regionalism of the first, of the first third of the century, or the Potomac urbanism of the 60s and 70s. In order to specify these connections, the second part of this talk will review recent research from anarchist geography and planning history interested in anarchists, especially on recluse, ugly, tar, focusing especially on the Geddes connection. Two, from recluse to Geddes. Federico Ferretti has recently shown that the collaboration between Patrick Geddes and, and the Reclus clan was more prominent in forming Geddes' ideas than has previously formed. He reminds that the Edinburgh Sound meetings uh, were attended by the brothers Eli and Eise Reclus in 1893 and 1895. He reminds also that previous contacts via Kropotkin since 1886 and especially the friendship and right collaboration through Paul Reclus, Elise's nephew, sheltered in Skoda by Geddes in 1894 in his escape flight from the French police. Paul Reclus was the Geddes right hand at the Abu. The, the right hand man at the Alton Tower and was for Ferretti the key connection. The Alton Tower and the model of the valley section are seen by Ferretti as educational experiments by Geddes and the recruit clan, challenging the traditional pedagogy through the active involvement of children and adults from popular classes on learning experiences out of the schools and on the floor. Freddy argues that the relation between Geddes and the recluse inaugurated the specific strategies of multisensory, multisensorial geographic education and were not limited to the site uh, that were not limited to the site and that questioned and relativized Recognize the unicity of a service standpoint through devices like the hollow globe ideated by Paul Repli, exposed at the Alwyn Tower. Three dimensional objects that could be manipulated were present in the whole exposition at the Alwyn Tower. Geographical models like the raised reliefs uh, uh, that could be handled and observed by visitors. For instance, the 1,000 uh, meters uh, raised relief uh, of Edinburgh exposed uh, there at the Alu Tower, which was built by Paul Reclu. It also, it also appealed to other sense than sight and was part of the same way of thinking of Reclu Ramblo, where Geddes was also implicated. Several geographers have stated that the origins of Gede's valley section were inspired by the idea of hydrographic basin set out by Elise Reclu in his Histoire d'un Ruisseau, 1869. In the description of uh, natural phenomena associated with the course of a river from its source to its delta, the great city occupies the lowest part of the valley at the end of the river course. Geddes Valley section was presented for the first time in London in 1905 and published as a simple diagram in 1909. There is no possibility for Geddes of understanding the city without taking into account the whole region descending from the river from uh, its fountains to the estuary where the great city stands. Ferretti demonstrates that Geddes, the valley section, was not only inspired by uh, a clear idea of the hydrographic basin, that, that there is uh, the continuity between the reliefs projected for the great globe and the idea.
idea of the cross section of the hydrographical uh, basin. There are not just disconnections, there is also the idea of the city distribution of the valley section exposed by Gebers in Cities as Supplied Sociology in 1905. In this key article, Gebers quotes his inspirational geographers for the city region survey. Mechnikov, and uh, anarchists and closest collaborators at the uh, Nouvelle Geographie Universelle. From Reclus, from Reclus, says Gebers, he takes the idea of regular distributions of the hierarchy of cities and travel times between them. An idea presented by Reclus in, in his The Evolution of Cities, 1895, just when uh, Reclus was in Edinburgh. Volker Belde include, includes a diagram of the valley region depicting the hierarchical relationship among various types of settlements, villages, cities, and secondary valleys. It is all this. Small valleys to the big valley to the sea, and the big city at the end of the river. We know that Geddes made with recruit toponymical corrections for the English version of some Nouvelle Geographie Universelle volumes. These volumes also take the river basin as uh, quite systematically as a criterion for the original division used in the, in the Nouvelle Geographie Universelle. We find it explicitly uh, uh, exemplified in the value ratio uh, uh, of a river in a region in the same city location ideas uh, uh, specified in the evolution uh, of cities. Sometimes regional description of European rivers in the Nouvelle Geography USA include some very elementary valley sections where height above sea level and the location of cities at the confluence with tributaries or important communication routes are indicated. This is the case, for instance, of the Ebro River in the first volume of the Nouvelle Geography in the USA. We can finally discover, review, Gede's uh, connection uh, in the Anarchist uh, geographer imagination of an, of an ever expanding city merged with nature, stated for the first time in Du Sentiment de Nature dans la Société Moderne, 1866. The future region city is envisioned as an unlimited entity. Railways and communication roads link every day with the active city center to the quiet uh, source of unfenced, de detached houses, of gardens, and orchards, and the distant uh, wild uh, regional spaces. Water infrastructures and transportation lines foster the everyday community of the city inhabitants and its food supply from the regional spaces. Forke Belter has presented the uh, Geddes conurbation idea as influenced by the recruit notion of ever-expanding city of the evolution of city. This is a comparison with two famous diagrams of cities in evolution, in Geddes' book in 1915, and this is a image of Paris at the end of the 19th century, indicating the houses where recluse or people was living at that time. From Geddes to Tarn, recent research has shown that the most decisive and lasting influence on the formation of John Turner as a young architect was that of Patrick Geddes. When he was 16, he was obliged at the second school to read a chapter of the culture of cities of Louis Mountford. 
and the name of Geddes was deeply engraved in Turner's man. Geddes was also present in his anarchist sympathies from the beginning. Turner's first article in Freedom in uh, 1948 was about the special relevance that Geddes' biological approach could have for anarchism. At the beginning of 1947, when Turner resumed his studies at the Architectural Association in London after the interruption of the war, he discovered papers and books by Geddes with multiple holistic diagrams and urban surveys. This discovery will mark his two main working focuses for life. The relational thinking applied to placemaking activities on the one hand and self-help housing on the other. Among, among the Geddes papers was the 1918 uh, Indoor Report, the historical beginning of eight self-help housing. It is, it is symptomatic that the only one of the Architectural Association professor that is uh, in Charles' memory today is Walter Segal, an architect who reinforced the influence that uh, William Morris and the Archive Class movement, movement had left in Turner's family environment and his interest in what is built locally in manual made vernacular architecture. Segal, an architect raised in the anarchist colony of Monterey Tarp and later immigrated to England, developed a serial construction system with light panels and a structural wood framework very suitable, according to Turner, for self-construction. Since the moment he discovered the Gedeshian diagrams, Turner immersed with his AA friends in the interpretation of the complex Gedeshian diagrams and their possible application to architecture. That immersion in the Gedeshian thinking machines will be transcendental in his biography and particularly in his, relation, in his relational vision of housing. Because his interest in Geddes, he receives from Jacqueline Turwitt the commission to write, to write a brief appendix on the meaning of the most complete of these diagrams for the reissue of Geddes' book, Cities in Evolution. Third, third, teacher and director of the three months course for soldier students at the Association for Planning Regional Reconstruction was indeed the other major influence for China. The other disciple of Geddes taught there that regional plan put their regional planning and edited Patrick Geddes in India, another inspiration for Turner work in Peru. The central thesis of Turner group of friends at the EAA was that the four quarter diagrams for channels of life called the notation of life, the most complete uh, thing machine published by Geddes in 1927 contributed decisively to thinking in a non-analytical but in a relational way. It is essential, essential to its role there, the great edition, second great edition of the Cities in Revolution, to study To study,
it is essential, uh, they remind them, to study the reciprocal relationships between environment or place in the terms of Geddes and organism, folk in the terms of Geddes, through functions. Effort, environment, function, organism, uh, in the opposite uh, direction, organism, function, environment. Uh, Geddes influence on Turner group were reflected in two issues of plan as Students Magazine published in the Architectural Association in 1949 and 1950. At Sian's summer school in Venice in 1952, Turner will meet the Peruvian architect Eduardo Neira, who had already translated uh, Turner text on the Gedesha notation of life for his Harvard planning students in Lima. In 1955, Neira informed Turner on the possibility of working on housing in Peru. The classes given at the uh, Instituto de Planeamiento de Lima at Turner's arrival in Peru at the beginning of uh, 1957 reveal the influence of the Scotland of Gates again. In June 1957, Turner will arrive in Arequipa, then in an explosive process of urbanization and occupations of peripheral lands with barriers. He will prepare an ambitious plan and write an exciting report using the four Gedesian chambers. You can see, for instance, using the Tegueres method of a conservative surgery comparing the pre situation, the post situation that it is uses, uh, for instance, in Edinburgh. Okay. The conclusions of the famous issue of architectural design in August 1963 are the Turner first major manifesto in favor of an autonomous self-help housing. It is interesting to observe how this relational vision of housing is already made explicit there. To understand a house, it is necessary to understand the nature of the urban process where the house is located. The housing product, as such, and its impact on the user's life. All of them factors related to each other. In fact, Turner has been claiming for years that even beyond self-help housing, the field for which he was uh, recognized worldwide during the 50s and 80s, his main contribution to housing studies has been that of that the reality of housing resides in relationships. To explain such relationships, Turner speaks of three basic functions of the housing environment. First, a remarkable, a reasonable security of tenure. Second, a shelter function derived from the dimension and characteristics of comfort or modernity of the house. And third, an adequate location within the city. That is to say, proximity or not to the uh, workplace or to facility and to community networks of relatives and countrymen. Since his, his essential work, a new vision of the housing deficit the deficit presented in Puerto Rico in 1966, the meaning of housing does not reside in the object itself, but in the broader user relationships with his or her housing environment. As in the interpretation of the notation of life of 1949, the reality, the reality of objects, of houses in this case, is not its only conceived in relation. 
based on an investigation with Rob Goetze and Control Urban Settlements, Problems and Policy of October 1966, will insist on these essential functions when analyzing the housing problem. Location, tenure, and shelter. Turner's relation vision of housing will reappear clear in his two major texts of the 1970s, Freedom to Build and Housing by People. He insisted there on the study of functions and priority in the housing demand, once again, once again giving relevance to the user utility above the material levels of the house as a mere object. Together, comfort, security of tenure and location must be included in the whole value of the home. The key issue is not what housing is, but what housing does for the user. Housing not as a name, as we say, but as a verb. Until today, the insistence of the English architect can still be seen in this relational vision of housing. At the age of 92, Turner works tightly, tightly today in his Hastings studio. Obsessed with his late framework, as he calls it, an ambitious instrument for indexing place making activities, he has again returned to Geddes where he started 70 years ago. Actually, he never abandoned uh, Patrick Geddes. Thank you very much for your.